guys and welcome back to today's tutorial. Today's tutorial is going to be all about luminosity masks and I did say in my previous videos that I was going to go over luminosity masks a little bit more in Photoshop and tell you guys what they actually do in terms of color grading and helping to color grade. I tend to use these uh, techniques in conjunction with other techniques that I've showed you guys uh, in my previous color grading video. So I'm going to go over briefly what luminosity masks are and what they do. I tend to not go too in depth with splitting up the image into lots and lots of different luminosity masks. Um, this is usually a really good technique especially for landscape photographers so there's definitely a lot of tutorials out there geared towards landscape photographers in particular but I'm going to make sure that I'm sort of sticking to mainly beauty for today and maybe I might do a future one on uh, fashion images in general as well. But first of all, before we start the tutorial, I'd really like to thank Musicbed for providing the music for this video. I do have an affiliate link in the description box below. You can click on it and start your 30-day trial if you'd like to try it out. If you'd like to sign up for the subscription model, they do have plans that start from $9. So any subscription that is purchased through this channel will actually go back to supporting this channel and helping me continue to make videos for it. So the first thing to do with luminosity masks is basically split up your image into different masks. And today we're just going to focus on shadows, midtones, and highlights. So this is really important for beauty images in particular because in my last video I talked about color grading and how that can be quite difficult with beauty imagery. It's very hard to color grade sometimes because there is so much of a skin tone in the image and you can't really push the coloring too far on either side a lot of the time, depending on what the image looks like, of course, but it can be quite difficult at times. So the way to create luminosity masks is by going to the channels tab just down here. And you'll see you've got your RGB channel and your red, green, and blue. So all we're going to do to create our first luminosity mask is hold down control or command on your keyboard and then click on the RGB tab. And you'll see that that's brought up a selection on the image and it's only selected the brightest highlights. So this is going to be our highlights layer and this is going to be what we'll work on for specifically highlights and the brightest parts of the photograph. So to make a mask, we're going to actually click on this button here and that actually saves the mask there in the channels tab. So then we can always come back to it later when we're needing to source that for different adjustment layers. So the next step we're going to take is by making the darks layer and this is going to contain all the most shadowed parts of the image in this selection. So it's basically the opposite of what we just did with the highlights layer. We're going to contain all of the dark elements in the picture now. So to make this mask, we're going to hold down control or command on the keyboard once again and click on RGB. And this time we're going to hold down shift, control and I to invert the selection. And you can see it has inverted the selection by doing that command. So after we've made that selection, now we just click on this button again and we save that as a future mask to use with our other adjustment layers. So I'm quickly going to rename these layers now so we don't get too confused. So alpha one was our highlights layer. And then alpha two was our shadows layer. And this time I'm going to split the highlights and the shadows into another layer each, just to really piece together the image that we want to have in the end. And so I can actually get a mid-tones layer because sometimes when you just do one highlights and one shadows layer, there's not actually enough to subtract from each of those to get the mid-tone selection. So what we're gonna do first is do the highlights. So you just hold down control and click on the highlights layer and then hold down shift, control and alt on the keyboard at the same time and click highlights again. And you can see that has selected the absolute brightest parts of the image. So they are really just the highlighted parts of the skin tone. So I'm gonna create another mask just by using this button here again. And we're gonna rename that one highlights brightest and now we're going to do the exact same thing for the shadows layer and we're going to get the really dark parts of the image so we're going to go control and click on shadows and then hold down shift control and alt and click on shadows again 
and see that's kind of selected the really dark areas of the image. So once again, we'll click this button here and we'll rename this one Shadows Darkest. And now we're going to make the midtones layer. And I'll just let you guys know to always click back onto RGB and make sure that none of these have the eye selected on. Otherwise you'll get the red over the image. So we'll go Control and D to deselect. And now we're gonna make the midtones. So the midtones is created by subtracting the highlights and the shadows of the whole image. So we need to select the whole image by going Control or Command A and then holding Control and Alt on the keyboard and then clicking on Highlights Brightest. We're only gonna be subtracting the brightest highlights and the darkest shadows. So we'll click on Highlights Brightest first and you can see it's subtracted the highlights. So now we're going to hold Control and Alt still on this selection and then click on Shadows Darkest this time. And it's selected all the parts of the image that are the midtones. So you can see nothing in the darkest areas are selected and nothing in the super highlighted areas are selected either. So this time we're going to create another mask by clicking that button and we're going to rename that to Midtones. And Control D and we will click on RGB again. And make sure that is clicked off. So usually I like to work with the midtones first and get that really nice skin tone that I'm after because that's pretty much what's going to happen when you work with the midtones luminosity mask. So to do this, we will have to hold down control to select the midtones layer. So control and then clicking on midtones. We now have our selection and we can go back to layers. And this time we will create an adjustment layer. And I usually tend to use color balance, selective color and curves a lot of the time with these, as I have done in previous tutorials. So this time I'm going to bring up the adjustment layers and we're going to go to color balance. And then we're going to move the sliders across and it's going to just change the main midtones of the image. So I really like the warm effect that that's giving on the skin tone. So I'm going to keep it pretty warm in the midtones. Probably to about there. And this time I'm going to go back to the channels and we're going to go to the darkest parts of the shadows. And holding down control and clicking on the darkest shadows. We go back to layers and we create another adjustment layer. So this one is going to be a color balance layer again, but just for the darkest shadows. So you can rename these as you go. I'm really lazy and I don't tend to do this, but it is a bad habit. So I definitely recommend uh, labeling a lot of your layers if you want to remember what they are in future times of going back to them and retouching. So this is just gonna change the darkest parts of the image. So I really kind of want to get the blues and maybe some of the pinks in the shadows. So I think that's pretty good just like that. And this time we're going to go and work on highlights. So going to channels, I'm actually going to go to just the highlights layer this time and we'll click on that. And uh, the reason I've gone to just the highlights is that the brightest highlights I'm going to reserve for basically a levels layer that will help boost them a little bit. There's not much in, in terms of color toning that's going to happen when I click on the highlights brightest layer because there's not much selected. It's just the absolute whitest parts of the image. So I've clicked on the highlights instead and we'll go back to layers and, and get another color balance layer again. So we'll just kind of see what that does. We might give it a slightly cool edge. Pretty good like that and you can already see the difference that that's made just by it splitting up those layers instead of just having one color balance layer that goes across the whole image that tends to be a little bit more not destructive but it's just not as targeted with your coloring process so I'm going to take a snapshot and if I want to go back to this I can but for now I want to work on brightening the image a little bit so I'm going to go back to channels and I'm going to hold down control and click on the highlights brightest layer and you can see there's not much selected and this is why I didn't really want to do a color toning adjustment layer on this because it wasn't going to make too much of a difference. But we'll click on the adjustment layers and go to levels because this will bring out the texture in the skin a little bit more. That's where the brightest parts are. 
So I'm going to move the slider up a little bit just to really get those highlights showing through. So once that levels layer is created, I really do want to show you guys what the difference is between just using a luminosity mask and using uh, a levels layer like you would regularly. So I'm going to click the eyedropper off on this. And then I'm going to bring up a normal levels adjustment layer and move this across. And as you can see, it lightens the entire photograph. Now I'm going to turn this off and pretty much what we've done with the levels layer here is just highlighted the brighter parts, which is really what we want. We want to make sure we're splitting the image up, especially with skin tones. It's so hard to color grade and to, to lighten and to darken areas. So I think that this is a really good controlled way of doing it. So compared to this, it's a lot better. So we're going to just uh, delete that new levels layer that we've made. And the same thing would happen with a color balance layer. The entire image's color would change and it's not as targeted a process as using luminosity masks. Now we're gonna go back to channels and I'm gonna show you guys one more adjustment just on the shadows layer. So we're holding down control and then clicking on shadows. Then going back to layers and going to curves this time. And we're going to go into the colored areas of the curves adjustment layer. So the red channel first and just do some adjustments, see how that looks. And then we're going to the green channel. As I said in my last video, it's very hard to teach you guys color grading, especially when I'm making things up on the spot because you just kind of get used to what certain colors do in Photoshop and it is a matter of experimenting and seeing what you can come up with. And this can sometimes take a long time to do. And then we'll go to the blue channel as well. So we're just really getting the shadowed parts of the image at the moment. And some of the midtones as well. Okay, and this time I'm just going to add a vibrance layer and we'll get the midtones out for this one, I think. So we'll go back to channels and holding down control, click on midtones, and we'll go into the adjustment layers and go to vibrance this time. Then we're going to bring down the vibrance just a little bit, probably to around minus four is pretty good. And then I'm going to get a selective color up. We're going to remove some, just some of the overly saturated pinks here. And we're going to go to channels and hold down control and go down to the shadows and the darkest areas of the image because we want these kind of areas to just be a little bit less saturated. So we'll go to selective color and make a new layer for this and move the magentas down in the reds channel. And also just the yellows a little bit, but mainly magentas. And then that's pretty much it. So I'm going to take a snapshot now and give you guys a little bit of a before and after, hopefully a little bit longer of a before and after than I have in previous times, because I know I've kind of clicked off quickly before. So we're gonna go back to the original image, which was this image here. And now this is the finished product. So you can see how subtle the differences are, but how targeted each of the coloring methods have been and the lighting methods have been as well. And you can really see just in the difference between the original and how much more depth the skin tone has. If you wanted to deepen the skin tone even more, and usually this is what I would do first off, I would create a black and white layer. So you can go back to the channels here and holding down control, click on midtones, going back to layers and then going up to a black and white adjustment layer. Usually I would set this to luminosity in the blending modes and then move down yellows and reds to deepen up the skin tone. So usually just moving them down a little bit and you can see the difference that that has made just there with bringing out the texture a little bit more too. 
but it's totally up to you guys whether you want to have that layer added in or not. It's just a nice little one that I like to usually add in to create a little bit more texture as well. So thank you guys so much for watching this tutorial. I hope it was really helpful and I hopefully explained luminosity masks well to you guys. I know it's a little bit confusing when you first start using them. It's just making sure you know which uh, highlights and shadows layer you're working on and just knowing how to split them up and then it becomes quite easy after that. So I am going to be having a Q&A very soon uh, on retouching. So if you guys would like to ask any questions in the comment section below, I'll hopefully answer them in the next video that I will do on a Q&A. Um, but let me know what else you want to see on my channel. Let me know if there's any requests for retouching videos and hopefully I will be able to get around to them very soon. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.